Hi there and welcome to lesson 5 in our P6 topic, our final physics topic and today we are going to be looking at motors. Now we're going to be using uh, something called Fleming's left hand rule which I will go, go through in, in the video later on but just so we're aware that's the sort of shape we need to be making. Okay, So when we've got our thumb and first finger here at 90 degrees and then again we get our first finger and our second finger at 90 degrees that's how we are working with our Fleming's left hand rule and it's something that if you have a look at the display outside the classroom you can see uh, an application of Fleming's left hand rule to do with the Hadron Collider anyway I will see you at the end so our objectives for today's lesson on motors will be by the end of this lesson, you should know and understand how Fleming's left-hand rule can be used to show how electromagnetic conduction can be used to convert electrical energy into kinetic energy. Now, just so we are clear, we need to understand what a magnetic field is. Now, a magnetic field moves from the North Pole to the South Pole of a magnetic material. Now, you can see here that the field is in here and that anything that's within the field can be affected by that that magnetic uh, magnetic properties now all these lines here will be just coming around the outside here so you can see that both directions there is uh, a field going around now don't forget this will also be 3d so it will be coming around this way and around the back as well now it's important we understand that because what we're going to be looking at is how the magnetic field when it's involved with a wire can actually have the movement properties that we are hoping to get from a motor. So magnetic fields can appear where there is a current. Now if we have a look here we've got a wire that has a current running through it which means we have a magnetic field going around that wire. Now the further you get away from the wire the weaker the magnetic field. Now here you've got a wire going round in a coil so the current is going in here and coming out through the other side which means you've got magnetic fields going around that wire in various different directions. Now because of that you can end up with movement around the magnetic field so when you have a current and a magnetic field together you end up with some sort of movement and what we're going to do is look at how we get that movement. Now the movement that happens is a, relates to Fleming's left hand rule. Now if you get your left hand and stick your thumb up then if you get your first finger and point it outwards, so it's at a 90 degree angle, and then if you get your second finger, so it points at 90 degrees to your first finger, that is how you get Fleming's left hand rule. Now, with the direction of the current being your second finger, your first finger is being the uh, magnetic field, and then your thumb is your the force. So, whichever the direction of the current and the field is, then you can work out the movement of that force. So, how will the movement happen? Now, if you've got the current going in through here, and then you have a magnetic field, which runs from north to south. So, you have the current running in this direction here, the field going in this direction therefore the movement will be in this direction so what will end up happening is the coil will go round in a circle and that's what we call the motor effect and this is a DC motor so you have a direct current running through here so it's just going in one direction now to ensure you have a complete circuit you need to make sure that the current is constantly going in through this way and out through this way. 
So as the coil turns, you are going to have a change in the current, and this is where you need to have a split ring. Now what this does is it changes the direction of the current each half turn. So when the um, this side gets onto this side, then it will swap the direction of the current. So the current remains going through this side. So at present, the current is flowing out of this way. However, when it gets to halfway round, instead of flowing out of this way, it will flow through this way. So as the coil moves, the current will change in terms of the wire that's going through. Now to ensure you get the maximum force, the coil should be at right angles with each other. Now you can also use a curved pole, so the pole in terms of the north and south, such as a soft iron core, and that will ensure that you get the correct angle each time. And this is what we mean by having the soft iron core, and then you have the radial field going through the magnetic field. Now, when we use a DC or a direct current motor, we need to ensure that we use a rectangular coil, as we've seen in the in the previous um, pictures. Now, it then rotates. Now you can change the speed or how much it's rotating by three ways. The first one is to increase the current and that will give a faster movement. You can also increase the number of coils. Now the more coils, the faster the movement again. And finally, increasing the strength of the magnet or the magnetic field will again make a faster movement. Now, there are lots of things that actually use uh, a DC motor. Now, I'm just going to give you a few examples of some. So, things like washing machines, CD players, food processors, and electric dr drills, all that have a moving motor part will have a DC motor within them. In fact, you guys know what a CD player is? It's what people used to use to listen to music before iPods etc came in. However, one of the problems with using a DC motor is that it can waste energy to the surroundings as heat and sound. So anybody that's used an electric drill will be well aware of the wasted energy there. Okay, so in conclusion to, to what we've looked at then, we have looked at the Fleming's left hand rule. Okay, so we've got the um, the first finger which is the magnetic field so first for field second is the, the second finger is the direction of the current so if we've got the magnetic field going in this direction and then the current going in this direction okay so it's going through the field then the movement will be up and then if we swap it round the movement will be down and that's how we get that turning of the magnetic coil within the motor Anyway, um, also we've looked at the radial fields uh, and remember that, that we put that soft iron core in the middle so that we get that 90 degree um, field going through. Uh, and we've also looked at uses of the, uh, the motor effect, things like CD players, drills, washing machines and so on. Uh, but remember that, that they transfer that kinetic energy to whatever it is they're doing <clears throat> However, some energy is wasted as heat and sound. Anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.